Okay, welcome back. Okay. That's a quick question to those who are not involved in worship ministry. Um, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to, um, <laughs> because I know um, it can seem a little, I, I know there are things that are kind of common. Um, like the preparation part, etc., it kind of might made sense. But then a whole lot of other things, um, you know, I, I just want to get your opinion, or your feedback, anyone who's not really, you know, intensely involved in worship. Maybe Nina can tell us. Uh, in, Yeah, you can use the mic. Uh, that's right. opinion about the worship ministry. No, no, about the not... about the course itself. Since we have been about yeah. the worship ministry course, since we have been talking about a few things back and forth, and some things in great detail, like you know. Yeah. So, so how is how is it with you? Yeah, for you. Okay. Just okay. hearing. I mean, we are standing and we thought of it, but so much of detail. The mm -hmm. and the one. One once I felt like the reputation you're talking about the song. Yeah. So I feel like sometime in the church, um, maybe the, we are not engaged in the worship or the worship leader. I don't know what happened. Repeated continuously. Sometimes we feel why is happening? Uh, it's irritating. Huh? Yeah. Uh. Why like maybe then I then I was thinking here maybe I'm not engaging or mm. I'm not doing it. something know. somewhere. You know, there's a disconnect. <laughs> yes. Uh. But sometimes. That makes a lot of sense. Mm. It's Sometimes it's we don't want to stop it. Like right. let it go. Right, right. So that one thing, and yeah. I'm just thinking, okay, we are seeing the worship team there, but I'm not really don't know like so much of harsh to say. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That is there. Sure. Okay. Anyone else? Thanks, Anina. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Pastor, for me also. But you, you're anyway. You're kind of involved, no? A little bit, no? In worship, no? Not yet. Okay, okay. Yeah. So for me also, mm. like uh, before coming here, worship, like uh, I was, I, I also told, like I already told you that I was not interested. Mm. So after coming here, I get to know, like, like I have to learn about this also. Mm. So it was really great learning in this subject worship ministry when you started from that time so before i used to think like worship leader how they lead just choosing songs and coming front of a stage and then leading all things so yeah. that is only for me it was like then after learning this it's like when we went deep as you explained how leader should be worship leader should be and what are the things he have to remember what are the things you have to like focus on these things right. and how his character should be so all these things, when I uh, uh, that time you explained, mm. I was thinking how this like it, this is very difficult, and mm. this is like some like for me it was like a new new things always coming. Like right. I was thinking like this, and how it's coming like this. Mm. So it was like fully uh, new new things for me to learn that how we have to be and how we have to lead and what we have to do, what need, what things we have to remember when we are leading in worship. Right. Right. And this all things it's really helped me to oh. uh, learn these things and okay. uh, really I, I enjoyed also my learning before mm -hmm. it was boring but uh. after learning it, it became enjoy like joy to learn okay so and after I, like I'm expecting a little more deep okay <laughs> so. right right oh yeah let first time worship today morning oh is it wow praise God oh Oh, yeah, I've seen him practicing with the guitar and sitting under the tree and all that. Yes. Oh, nice. Wonderful. Good. Super. So I'm glad, you know, at least uh, because my only thing was it shouldn't be a disconnect, you know. So it's it's definitely, you know, it, it can be, you know, new information, etc. From that point of view, it will be helpful. Um, and also for those of us who, who might not be directly involved in worship ministry or leading a worship team, uh, but you might be overseeing the overall ministry you know you might come to a place of being a like a like a maybe a you know a pastor senior pastor whatever and then so these are 
ministries which uh, come under your purview which you have to oversee so this will help you know this this information this knowledge will definitely be of help when you need to guide or when you need to um, you know recruit people and put people you know for this kind of ministry it will be helpful right uh, so yeah okay so we'll uh, we'll continue um, yeah sure you have another yeah like uh, for people uh, who are involved in worship ministry like especially uh leading worship and uh, besides to the worship leader for people like with musicians who are playing instruments and all like uh it is like they were so focused on you know playing the right chords mm -hmm. means and all so uh, sometimes we can't able to really like experience what the people down the stage were experiencing the present like mm. because we are so focused than what god was doing in the moment mm. then more than like we are more focused on like okay how to bring my skills or mm. do something that even add up to the worship mm. musically we are so focused on it and yeah. we may tend to miss what god was like what god was doing mm. or the you know that heavy presence or the glory what's happening right. we may tend to miss sometimes because we are focused here but how we can manage mm. at the same time also receive right not just to give and you know give it but also receive what god was doing and mm. yeah the thing is um, see when it comes to the the skill part of it it can happen even for the singers worship leaders everybody right being preoccupied with the skill it's like okay what should i do now how should i sing it even uh, what should i play so that is why we need to uh, make sure that our practice enough so that the skill becomes second nature okay it becomes part of you where your mind is free to focus on this worshiping the lord okay so for example like i'm i'm sure you know if you have if you are a you know maybe you've just learned to play the guitar and all that so you know you so for you you know changing from one chord to another it's a difficult thing right you from you know, c to f and g you know it's like oh f you know i have to hold so many strings <coughs> it becomes a problem so then over a period of time you're changing it you know you have to look at the fretboard and change first of all but after some time you don't have to look at the fretboard you're just changing just like that then singing with it it bit is a challenge singing and playing how do i do it but then over a period of time you realize hey i can do this right so it's a it's a matter of mastering the skill uh, excuse me where you you come to a place where the skill becomes second nature so you you realize it you know because there is something called muscle memory there is something you know where your brain actually is capable of storing all these things so even in your sleep you know when you say you know, d major you're just holding it <laughs> you don't have to think look you know just so that happens so for a musician also where yes they are kind of intensely involved in playing the music but you can actually worship from your heart worship in spirit even as you play music engage with what is happening right um receive from what is happening so we can do that so so that is the that, that is the whole emphasis of practice yeah it's uh, getting the skill in place so that it doesn't become a hindrance for you personally but it rather frees you to worship and in fact the more skilled you are it should actually give you the flexibility to go wherever the lord wants you to go you know musically uh, spiritually speaking because you know the musically certain things that you play express the you know the heart of god or the heart of man even you know maybe hung hunger for god etc you're able to express that musically right uh, express that emotion or express that uh, cry so being skilled helps helps in that right so that should be the focus no, it should not be a hindrance right, right. okay so uh, i just want to share uh, you know um, 
some uh, information on the development okay how can we develop a worship ministry and what kind of a what is it that we need to have in mind in order to develop the worship ministry you know in a church or develop a worship team uh, first of all you know uh, we can have various ways of training the people you know we can have these one day retreats we can have afternoon training time or something like that you know for the church uh, for the for the team in the church um we can do that you know these are opportunities that we can have for the team to be trained okay but oh, before that we need to understand that the team needs to have a solid grip on the vision okay we talked about it in different subjects but this vision is what would come back over and over again right because and even in a thing like worship team if you ask people why are you in a worship team if there is no common vision they might say different things you know, you know i want to glorify god i want to serve people i want to you know uh, uh, help people connect with god or i like singing all these kind of things people might share but if there is a common vision then we will say okay i have this personal wish but this is the common vision that i should work towards work towards okay so many uh, many times the worship team or the you know the church does not have a vision so that's the problem right in fact uh, as a worship ministry you know we i i i'm thinking like maybe 15 years back or even 10 years yeah i think maybe 10 12 years back we had a serious problem because everybody very highly skilled very gifted but differing vision so everybody is feeling frustrated right so uh, in their heart they thinking okay i'm i think i'm going in the direction but then you know why is it that i'm not reaching right why is it that you're not encouraging me to go there because everybody seems to be you know some people going to be uh, seem to be going the leader seem to be going in another, one direction everybody seems to be going in another direction right so then we had to clarify we had to clarify and say hey this is actually the vision you know? so let me just read out okay the vision of apc's worship ministry is to please god's heart in unrestrained worship this that's the focus that's the main thing so because worship is towards god which is worship is for him um so to please god's heart so it starts with god right to please god's heart in unrestrained worship what does unrestrained mean you know without holding back right un uh, um, uh, with, a, with a whole heart Uh, without any kind of a, a block or a barrier right understand worship uh, read the next line it's to encounter his manifest presence so that's the thing so it involves pursuing god it involves encountering his presence third part is to establish a community of believers who will do the same so it's talking about the church it's talking about um, facilitating people to please god's heart in worship facilitating people to encounter the manifest presence of god right but the first thing is personally i need to do that so it's not about me instructing others okay this is how you need to worship but me personally worshiping so that's the thing you know so that the team worships personally in this manner and then you can establish others in it right so that's the vision right so uh, we kind of put down few things okay this is what we are pursuing going after okay what is the goal we should have you know a church where there's a community of passionate worshipers okay and uh, i remember that you know going I, i think two places that i can remember one is uh, one is one you know international church and where um, you know you don't have to say anything you don't have to exhort people to worship you know um, so it was just worship just explodes you know every time people just start people are ready they just want to there's no need in fact sometimes i feel there's no need for a worship leader they can just come and you know and, and people just and another place that i recall is uh, when i was leading in um, this was in kohima kohima some time back um, many years ago and this was a afternoon session post lunch right so you can imagine you know post lunch session and then they said um, i thought it will be some 20 minutes of singing and then again message will start so they said no we changed our mind we said we want to do some 45 minutes of worship it's like oh god post lunch you know everybody's had stomach full how will it happen so i just i was like thinking of 
you know, worst case scenario, it'd be tough, it'd be difficult and all. But, I, but to my surprise, I just went and I played one chord. That's all. I just played one chord. And everybody just, just started to you know, worship and on their own. No, you know, just start singing spontaneously. It was as if they were leading me. You know, I was just following. <laughs> so it was such a joy to be in that kind of a you know situation. Right? So then I then we realized that hey, it comes from a culture of building a culture of worshiping God. Building a culture meaning you're teaching. There is revelation. You know, people are because of their conviction, they are moved to do it. There's leading by example. You know, people have done that, and it's done consistently over a period of time. So it doesn't happen overnight, right? So, so this is what is really required to build a culture of worship, right? So, like even here, you know, Bible college and when you worship and this thing, you, you know that there is a already a culture that is set, right? So, um, like especially during the supernatural hour and all that, you don't you don't need to exhort much. People are already, you know, they begin to worship, and we see that. So there is a culture. So, um, so the thing is that. Uh, that should be our pursuit, you know, to build a culture of worship, right? Okay. So, uh, looking at that, as a worship ministry, our goal is to encounter the presence of God. Okay. So, while you know, you need to have excellent music, etc., but the highest thing to esteem or to have priority is about the presence of God. Okay. So, here and there, sometimes you know, we miss the focus. That happens, you know. Sometimes maybe the focus is too much on music, and we get excited about the song, and well, we just need to come back, right? It's not something that we, you know, kind of go in the direction. We realize, okay, hey, we need to come back, right? So it's about God's presence. It's about pursuing God's presence, etc. Right? So, uh, so we pursue that. If you look at that, uh, there's a graphic there in your notes also. Right. If you look at that, just uh, you know, it's like a ladder, and it starts from you know to the bottom one. Maybe you know, it's it's like a pathway of any worship team or any worship, you know, leader of worship, whatever. You know, the first thing is maybe you know the team has got a set of songs, and uh, they are practicing. They are good, skillful, excellent, right. And they, what is their focus? They want to do it well. Okay, I want to sing. I want to get people to sing with me. And that, if I do that, that's a win. That's a success. Right? So the focus is on leading the congregation, and they want to lead it well. Right. The second step, this we need. We need to do that. Right. We need to have those things in place. The second thing would be to lead the congregation to sing to the Lord. Okay, you're not just singing the song because it's a nice song, but you're actually singing it as worship unto the Lord. You're making it a conversation with the Lord. So the team is facilitating that. The team is also leading by example, which means the team is also making it a conversation with the Lord. The song or whatever is being said, spoken, conversation with the Lord, addressing it to the Lord. Right? Then third thing would be to you know, lead the congregation to worship the Lord. You, know, you do it well. The focus is on offering it unto the Lord uh, as an act of worship. Right. So, um, so what is the difference between the second and the third one? Here, it is you know the skill and everything is in place, but your focus is completely on whatever you're singing, whatever you're bringing forth. It is as an offering to the Lord. So that's something that the team can needs to grow into. Right. Fourthly, you know the team is experiencing now. Hey. When we offer it to the Lord, when He receives the offering of praise and worship, we are beginning to experience the power, the presence of God because He's receiving it, right? So, um, so there is the, the the presence of the manifest presence of God, right? The team is experiencing that, the church is experiencing that, uh, and people are getting excited and saying, "Hey, you know, when we did this, when we did that." Uh, on, the, on this particular Sunday, you know, people can say, "Okay, on this day, God really, I, met, you know, met with me." How can I say that? There's something that happened tangibly. You know, I felt the manifest presence of God. It was like fire. It was like you know, water pouring over me. Um, whatever, you know, it's like the wind of the spirit, and there's such a refreshing. Just felt freedom. Burdens were lifted away. All those things, right? 
in the time of worship there's you know even the supernatural things happening like i remember once uh, this one person came for one of the worship nights and uh, went back and she actually this person came with a tumor right the tumor and uh, so like post the worship uh, night um, at the end of the time she felt there was a change but she didn't want to you know kind of say it then but then she went and uh, checked checked with the doctor checked with the you know did all those scannings and all that and found out that the tumor had disappeared yeah so then she wrote an email and said you know this was happened i just wanted to check it out and you know so in the presence of god people are experiencing the power of god right and the supernatural works of god and touching their body touching their mind um, and i remember once also when we were having this 40 days of uh, worship seeking god so this person was having major problem with uh, you know uh, domestically you know in his marriage so he was always you know cribbing about his wife and uh, angry with his wife you know she was uh, not really understanding me etc but then he came one uh, that particular evening and uh, went back and then the next day he message saying you know you know something happened uh, the love of god just so flooded my heart that i know i had all this irritation and anger and you know bitterness and uh, about my wife but god just filled my heart with so much love right so all i could have was love for my wife so i was you know i was so filled with that love uh, i know that she has not changed uh, and but then something has changed about me you know i'm full of love for her so the church is experiencing the team is experiencing the presence of god and that's something that we need to keep going right keep reiterating encouraging saying hey guys you know this is what we are after you know, uh, let's not just go back to singing songs just to singing a song you know, we are offering a song as uh, you know as unto god in worship and everything we're doing it as unto the lord so you know that increases that frequency increases right so we begin to express um, and experience god's manifest presence and flowing in prophetic worship and soaking in the presence of god and you know even without us praying this other things happening this healing this encounter angelic encounter so many things supernatural things happening in the presence of god right so um and other levels of worship you know we step into the like throne room of god and again you know different intensity of the presence of god where um maybe there's not nothing being sung nothing being spoken but everybody is just in awe of god right for maybe i don't know for, for an extended period of time just soaking in the presence of god and nothing is being sung or nothing is being spoken right and uh, and then you know talking about the habitation of god becoming a dwelling you know these are things that we can actually as a worship team say hey we are pursuing this you know this is where we want to go right so let's let's press in for more of god let's get hungry for more of god um and let's lead by example so that you know it's it becomes contagious infectious to everyone around also everyone who's part of that uh you know worship also they realize that hey the presence of god is making a difference you know and that, that's something that um we are created to created to crave for really you know there's nothing like the presence of god um so you know everyone also seeks that right seeks that time and time with god corporately right so all this we know you know we this whole um uh, you know this graphic this le- these dif- different levels that we are talking about we know that we can pursue personally right but we are looking at as a ministry so we are talking about a corporate time of worship right okay um now the second thing that we see is that to establish god's bl- blueprint for the church right so um, this you may you may you may have seen this picture right when you studied the uh, about the local church house of god right so you would have seen this picture it's about um, is it this talks about various things pictures various descriptions that we see in the bible in the word of god about the church right for example the bride the bible dis- describes the church which means the people of god as the bride of christ okay 
So this is one picture that we have of the church. Another picture is that the church is called what, what is commonly used, right? The body of Christ. So each of these pictures have a revelation, have a truth behind it. When you say the bride of Christ, it means that the church, the people of God, are expected to keep themselves pure for the groom, right? to be in love with the groom, to, to have those intimate times of conversations and intimate time with the Lord. So that's the picture. So how can we, as a church and as a team, how can we develop that? Right? So these are different expressions of the church or different facets of how the church should be. Right? A house is called, I mean, church is called a house of prayer and worship. It's called the family of God. It's called the temple of God. It's called the pillar of truth. Um, we are the vine and the branches. You know, he's the vine and we are the branches. So all this is truth about the church. So as a worship ministry, also we see that we are kind of aligning ourselves to building the congregation in all these different areas. So it could happen in in a way where you know it could be it could be in the selection of the songs, which could be in, in line with the theme of the message, right? Because sometimes we are you know, there are so many aspects of um, of God's characteristics. While we stay with only a few that we are comfortable with. Right? I remember initially, uh, it, I was very comfortable singing the songs of worship. Right? Some of the uh, like the intimate songs of love and adoration to God. But when it came to songs of victory and you know celebration and uh, songs which are uh, you know about deliverance and all that. I would I would not be too comfortable, right? So because there was no understanding of it, there was no revelation, or there was a there was no deeper revelation of it. So so would stay away from it. Okay, sing it, sing it, but you know you're kind of not too engaged in it. You're not you're not able to lead everyone into it, right? But then that changes when you get a revelation when you study. Uh, intentionally, and you get a revelation, right? So, same way, in all these aspects, the worship team can minister, right? Um, to develop the and establish people in these truths. You know, we see ten things there, right? God's chosen people, maybe the army of God, and so on. So, um, so the worship actually, the worship ministry can lead and uh, establish people uh, in the time of worship in these truths as well, right? So, um, so yeah, so that's something that we see as a, what a, as a team that we can pursue, right? The vision, and uh, we look at um, you know what are some of those goals, those stages that we can take the worship team into. Okay, so so this will, th which means that as a worship ministry, you know, we can we can have a focused pathway. Right? People are saying, okay, is the worship ministry just about coming and you know planning a song and singing a song or then we understand that it's it's so much more it's about the presence of god it's about personally me experiencing the presence of god it's about me and the team you know leading others into experience the presence of god and we know that great and amazing things happen in the presence of god and so you know how to make that journey right how to travel as a church and make that journey, right? Okay. Uh, and the second thing we saw was about the blueprint that God has for the local church. So uh, sometimes we have a wrong idea of church itself, right? Some I've heard some people say church is in a hospital for sick people, right? I, like I get that there is healing, but Never in the word can we see, you know, church being mentioned as a hospital. It's mentioned as an army. It's mentioned as a bride of Christ and all that, right? So, yes, there is healing. And uh, yes, there are wounded. And people find restoration and healing. And so that's the thing, right? So um, so those are things. Like we need to get the right perspective about the a picture of the church. And the worship ministry also helps in developing, establishing the church in that, right? Any any questions, thoughts on that before we uh, move on? 
Okay. So this comes with reiteration. You know, every time what happens is this kind of plan, we we share it with every person who is joining the team, right? Every person, you know, this particular plan, this vision, this document. So many times people may not go through in fully or may not understand. Oh, it's, it's like boring, but it's important stuff. You know, we tell them, guys, we need to, you know, go get back to it, look at it, uh, because this is what we are as a ministry. And um, I think during the audition thing, you know, I talked about the pre-audition meeting, right? So even before the people come for audition, there is a pre-audition meeting. So even in that, we reiterate this saying, this is what worship ministry is about. So um, like we've had people, good singers, very talented, uh, gifted. But once they attended the pre-audition meeting, they realized that this is not something that's on their heart. And they want to perform, you know, maybe, maybe sing for God. But then this is in terms of worship, in terms of having this kind of a commitment is not something that on their heart. Right. So so it, it's good to make it clear, hey, this is something that the ministry is about, worship ministry is about. Okay. So what what are some requirements of the worship team or expectation by the leadership about the worship team member? Okay, so this is also something very vital, very important, right? To understand, uh, and this this is also you need to understand. This has also come about after making a lot of mistakes, right? As a team, made a lot of mistakes, um, you know. So it has come about after committing those mistakes and trial and error and all that. Uh, this is you know something that is put together. So okay, so first thing requirements is one one thing is the commitment. Okay, what are you committed to? First of all, commitment is to the Lord, right? So you need to be a believer. You need to be a committed believer. Um, so that is a commitment, definitely. But apart from that, you know, which is a given, you need to be commitment. You need to be committed to the local church. Okay, in this case, it's a church to which uh, a church in which the worship ministry. Um, which you desire to be part of, right? So committed to the local church. Which church are you going to? Where are you attending, right? So is the church where you're attending, for example, if it's APC, you know, is this your home church? You know, is this where you go Sunday after Sunday, right? Yeah, you might travel, you might visit other churches, etc. That's fine. But th is this your home church, right? That's the thing. Are you committed? Second one, um, is to consider that you know when you say that you're committed to APC or a, a local church, is this where you're fellowshipping? Is this where you're drawing from spiritually? Is this where you're contributing, serving? Right. So that is also something that we need to see. You know, sometimes I just we visit and go, but there's no, you know, you're not part of the life of the church, right? You're not really engaging with what is happening. Um, the commitment is to that extent, you're just a visitor, right? Uh, so are you committed? Right? So what does commitment mean locally? You know, you're committed to the leadership, you're committed to you know, whatever the statement of faith, vision, values, culture, you're committed to it. You know, you you understand and you are, you know, you are committed to it, right? Now there could be certain things that you don't agree on, but you know, not everything that you agree on, but then you know, at least you understand. This is where I disagree, but but I'm submitting. You know, I this is what the leadership is about, and I'm submitting. So, statement of faith, vision, values, culture, you know, all that you understand uh, beforehand, right? Um, yeah. So, uh, receiving, participating, you know, all that. So, when we say committed, practically, how can we live that out? Okay. First thing is attendance. Right? You're attending church. You're attending the services, right? Okay. Second one is you are fellowshipping with the rest of the church family. You know, sometimes I meet people and I think they are, you know, visitors. You know, I just go and introduce myself and say, you know, uh, you know, is it your first time? And they say, no, no, Pastor, oh, we know you. We've been coming for, you know, five years. Then, uh, but uh, the minute, you know, we finish, we come a little late, but then the minute we finish, we leave. Immediately we leave. So that's why we don't meet with people and we don't 
so which means that uh, they come for the sunday they are there praise god but the the rest of the life of the church in terms of fellowship in terms of you know serving uh, that is not there so so when we say okay as a worship team member you know you connect with fellowship you can't just be a visitor right and be involved in other things that the church is doing like my, maybe five days of prayer maybe there's a worship evening maybe there's you know missions you will be part of it right uh, and if you if, when you have the schedule and time be part of it okay. so first one was commitment right so this is this is something that you need to establish like even when people come maybe you are leading a service i mean you are leading a church and uh, you need to ensure you might have talented people just visiting you know different uh, different churches and saying you know this sunday i can you know i can or you know one sunday in a month i can come and lead worship and so on which is which is good if it is that's what you want but it is always good to have the team that is actually part of the church right why is it because they are you know they are part of the vision the culture the values the teaching the journey that the church is making they are also part of it they're also growing right growing in maturity growing in understanding uh, together as a church so it doesn't mean that you cannot never have a you know a visiting worship team to minister you know they can there's so much they can do that you know? but then if you want to have a ministry team worship ministry you know in the church just make sure that everybody is part of the church first before they are part of the team okay because you used to have problems some people will come only when they are scheduled for leading worship other sundays you won't see them right so we have to make sure that hey, you know first of all your commitment is to the lord yes fine then are you committed here right and then you're committed to the team because it's a ministry of the church you can't be committed to the ministry team without being committed to the church so so that's the order right it makes sense practically also right um okay the second thing is about accountability okay now um you hold yourself as a worship team member to a high level of personal accountability what does it mean it means that self governing ability right and also growing in spiritual maturity your spiritual walk with the lord is your responsibility right yes there are people who are maturing and growing in christ and etc all that is fine but then you need to hold yourself accountable for your spiritual growth right uh, so that's the thing so you you spend time with god you, know, you have a discipline reading the word prayer personal worship etc right worship team members also ensure that they live a consecrated life you know they do not intentionally walk in sin yes all of us go through struggles all of us make bad choices but don't make that your lifestyle you come back you know nobody is going to be like 100% perfect and holy and all that yes we are growing in holiness we are going we are, we are being perfected right we are works in progress but you know make that your lifestyle this thing to walk in consecration and make that your works right we also say that and it's good to reiterate this that if at any point the worship team member feels that you know spiritual life is is not where it should be you know i'm struggling in some areas some addiction some bondage and something you know maybe the life has become too busy and they've been ignoring neglecting their spiritual life and so they can actually ask for a time out saying you know i i need some time out i need to get right with god i need to spend time with god i need to you know get things my priorities in order okay maybe your life has been so busy i've been busy with work i've been busy with travel and uh, you know these things are out of place so um they can always say you know come forward and say i want to take some time out right and I, and this is also something to put in culture as a culture right even recently there was one person who said you know pastor so many things going on difficult uh, so i've asked for a time out you know i've taken some step back so that i can be renewed in god refreshed and then i can get back right so things like that right same should also be in the area of skill okay so one is spiritual life the second thing is also skill right in terms of 
your maybe as a musician as a singer whatever your skill you feel that you know the skill is lacking i need to improve i'm i'm not been able to spend time to practice on my own and everything is rushed i'm just coming and doing and going through the thing and it's not up to the mark right so there also one could step back right or the whoever was leading the team the worship ministry can actually you know have the freedom to say maybe you should take some time off you know work on these things work on these areas strengthen this and then come back right maybe take a month off work on it maybe take some classes attend some you know some training some some seminars whatever um some workshops and then <clears throat> be equipped be trained increase your level skill level and then come back right so okay so these are some things that uh, we're doing um suppose a team feels that they're not regular you know they are yeah, you have a question yeah. oh francis has a question okay also so like yeah. telling you the person like take a break yeah. or something but we don't have any other person to put in that place mm. so how will manage that yeah that's a difficult thing right so but the thing is um, okay so two things one is if the person is really struggling struggling with sin struggling with some addiction that person needs a break so there's there's no question of uh hey but the show needs to go on, you know the church service needs to go on and there's no question like because ultimately that person matters right so personally he is damaging himself or herself so um we need to do that so treat that as priority the other thing is maybe it's not if if it's something that they can do parallelly like i'm talking i'm not talking about see serious lifestyle issues or addictions or sin uh, this is something to do with skill maybe there's something that they can do parallelly that is fine as well right uh, where you say okay you know you, you go for classes and uh, let's review it right right but you be intentional about it uh, go for drum classes do for whatever you know let's review it and it's something that they can do side by side that is fine um but if it's something even the skill level if it's something really lacking and it's affecting the you know the everything the about the team everything um the 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 quality of the whole thing comes down drastically because of this one person then it's better for them to take a break right uh, though they might be um uh, no one to replace that person but it's important that they take a break at that point and somehow we can manage right yeah like uh, like sometimes uh, like if you if you notice in the roster you would have seen that uh, not every location has a full band right there are so it is like this so it's it's fine you know certain places you just manage with and i think one particular one particular sunday i think uh, that person had a sore throat whatever it was very difficult so we managed with the uh, recorded songs track okay so <laughs> so i said okay we told the pastor please uh, there's no one there there's no one available so just for this sunday you manage like this so they played the track everybody sang with it i think it was like a karaoke track um it would had some you know some person basic Uh, melody was being sung and then you could just join in and sing so it had the lyrics coming on screen so everybody joined and sang and the person um, the pastor was there and he, he just exhorted in between songs so it was not like i mean a, a perfect like other times but it was good it, they finished one song exhortation play the second song you know let's you know he just encouraged everybody to sing they did it so we can manage <laughs> yeah okay so um yeah uh, you have another question <clears throat> for a pastor talking about like people who are struggling in the team sometimes like uh, it is visible to us and sometimes people come yeah like but also have been like sometimes 
even uh, they can't able to come because they feel so insecure. Maybe mm. they feel like, okay, if I open up, they may judge. Mm. And uh, he all like, they have many reasons, right? Like, if I say it, they will judge me and I will never get an opportunity again. Mm. And and sometimes they may willfully cover it up mm. and we can't even notice sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So how to deal? And sometimes when we also ask people like, you take a break for some while and then come back, you know, work on yourself and then come back. People may not agree to it. Mm. Yeah. So then again, it comes back to that same, same thing of people already having an understanding that this is, this is the expectation. So what we are sharing is these are requirements. This is how, um, this is what is expected, like in a team member. And these are things that we have put in practice in the team. So this is there as a system. It is there as a culture, right? So it's, it, but the only thing is it needs to be done honorably, right? Not condemning the person, right? So will a person take it well? Not all the time. Right? We've had some hard conversations with people saying, hey, this is not the expectation. And what you're doing is not expected. And so uh, the person also, you know, what was not very happy, but then we had to share, hey, it's not about, we're not putting you down. You understand that you can always get back, but then right now you need to work on it. Right? So skill. Other thing is people may not always come up and say that this is what I've done wrong or this is what is going wrong in my life. Unless we give them the permission and the assurance that uh, you know they will they will not be put down right yeah will will you know people will not compliment them or uh, applaud them for it you know but then at least they can get help right so um, so that that kind of a culture has to be there uh, right from the leadership intentionally you know and that open which is difficult to uh, uh, which is a which is, is going to take some time it's going to take some time. It's going to take some interactions, walking with the people and people getting the confidence. Yes, you know, this is something that I can do. And otherwise, self-accountability, where you you have you are accountable to God. You don't have to just come and share everything with the you know person if you're not comfortable with. But you can say, you know, I need a break. I need to set things right. You don't have to go into the details, but you can say, you know, I need to work on some things in my life. And I need a break because you are accountable personally, accountable to God, and you you feel that certain things are not in place, that things are you know weaknesses are still there, and and so you you just tell the person, the worship pastor or worship minister, a leader, I need to put some things in place, and if you are okay, you can actually share the details so that the person can also help uh, direct to a good resource or pray with you know. Um, but if not, that is fine. We respect the privacy of the person. So, yeah. So that's uh, it's important to have this in place because because you know sometimes burnout happens because you don't have this, right? People are just giving, 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 and then they they don't have that whole thing in place, right? So it's also we make it a point. You know, sometimes it happens, right? Uh, because people are not there. Or people pull out at the last minute because they had to travel on work or some personal emergency. And the person who led for the last three weeks is again, you know, asked, approached, you know, can you lead it this month? And they oblige. But we should not repeat that. Uh, so that is why we need to have more people in the, in the pool so that they can step in and do it. Yeah. Okay, I think we're almost out of time. So... Yeah. Um, other two, uh, you know, situations could be like if if I'm not attending church regularly for some reason, and I'm attending some other church also, you know, I I can just um, you know take some time out if I if I want to, you know, maybe start attending some other church. You no, know, I, I think we should be uh, you know we should be transparent enough to say you know I'm already attending another church, so you know let me just step out of the team. Okay. Um, so that's the thing. Uh, sometimes what happens is we're not 
we're not in agreement with the statement of faith with the vision with the values right so what happens in that case have a discussion but if there is a disagreement completely about the basic vision statement of faith values culture it's better not to serve right because you, you are having the there's no way you can go get in and change the whole team and change the leadership and so on so it's better to you know go to a place where you are in agreement with and serve there right okay okay so we'll stop here and uh, we'll get back later thank you god bless bye, -bye.